Hi there. If you've been using E1's on-premise Smart Connect for a while, opening Smart Connect 21 for the first time can be a little bit daunting. In this video, I'll go through some of the key differences between Smart Connect 2018 and Smart Connect 21. By the end, you'll see that the differences really aren't as big as they might look at first blush. The first big difference you'll notice is, is as you're logging in. We aren't using Active Directory to control access to Smart Connect anymore. Instead, we're using the same universal access management system that is used to control access to our online products. That means that the same email address and password that you use to log into Smart Connect on premise can later be used to log into smartconnect.com. And if you have access to PopTalk, the same email address and password gets you into that. When I installed Smart Connect 21, I selected my company, account, server, and Smart Connect database name. Now while logging in, I simply enter the email address and password for my account. This reaches out to the E1 licensing servers to validate that your license is still active and then lets you in. When you're just starting out, the person who created your account will be the only one with access to Smart Connect and will be the administrator by default. That administrator can then start to add users over here on the security tab. As I said before, we aren't going to be pulling in users from our Active Directory anymore. Instead, we'll enter an email address and assign them a starting password for the user, which we can force them to change using this checkbox. Other than that, you can see that the rest of the security is similar to what you had in Smart Connect 2018, with the ability to control what users can do, as well as which integrations and connectors that they can access. The next big difference is how we deal with connectors. Connections have moved from the Setup tab to their own tab. One of the coolest benefits of this is that you can have multiple instances of the same connector. No more hosting multiple instances of Smart Connect so that you can support multiple tenants of your ERP or CRM solution. For example, if I had a QA tenant of Dynamics GP to connect to, I could simply create a new, create a new connection to Dynamics GP and fill it in with my QA server information. Here's what that GP connection looks like, just so you don't have to watch me fill it out. Not scary at all. With multiple instances, I can easily switch between connections as required while creating my maps. And don't worry, Smart Connect still supports Dynamics GP back to version 10 and Dynamics NAV back to version 2009 R2. Your Smart Connect 21 licensing dictates how many connections are allowed to be set up on your tenant. If you need more connections than your current license allows, it's easy to nip on over to the E1 Solutions Store and upgrade your license. The next big difference is how we deal with data sources. Instead of maintaining sources in each integration, now we go to the data sources tab. In essence, setting up a source is the same as it's always been, but now we can use one source across multiple integrations. If I click on create here, I have the same data source type options that I've always had with bulk change in real time, and they work the same way they always have. The only real difference here is that file has been pulled out to its own choice in this list. It used to be included under bulk. But when I choose each of these data source types, I have the same options that I've always had, except now they're shown as icons instead of a dropdown. Once I've chosen my source type, I simply click the connection type and then click OK. Now I have to give it a name and select which connection instance I want to use. If the connector has a concept of companies, I would choose that as well from the dropdown. Just like before, each data source is going to look a little bit different. In the case of this Dynamics GP data source, I can click on Modify to get a visual query builder. Because this is a Dynamics GP connector, I'm seeing the display names over here instead of the technical. In the case of this Business Central data source, I simply have to select the service or services that have been published in Business Central that I want to integrate to. And for this Excel data source, I'm still selecting the workbook and sheet where the data resides. When it's time to set up my integration process, I simply select the data source that I need for this integration. While we're here in the integration process window, it might be worth noting that other than the name and the data source stuff we just talked about, nothing else has changed. You still select your destination type, map your fields, add tasks, and schedule things the exact same way you always have. The last change you might notice is that there is no longer a setup or administration tab. While I've already shown you where to go for a few of the things that used to be there, the rest can be found up here on the file menu. It's all the same menu choices, just in a new place. So there you have it. While Smart Connect 21 might look a little confusing when you first open it, the changes really aren't that bad. If you're ready to go play, you can download Smart Connect 21 from our website right now. Just remember that 21 and 2018 cannot be installed on the same server. If you'd like to get some more detailed information or training on Smart Connect 21, please reach out to your account manager to discuss your options. Thanks for watching.